Hello and welcome to the possibly final for now, hopefully not, uh, Infinity Train uh, rambling reviews. Um, I would obviously love to do more of these in the future, but it will very much depend on whether this show ever shows up again. Um, I feel it's one of those things where I'd like, I like to try to feel hopeful and positive about that option, but like realistically, the odds of it coming back production-wise, slim, slim sadly to none. But um, you know, it's. It's a, it's had an it's had an amazing run and like it it really has been one of the best animated shows on television while it has been around so it's kind of you know it's it's one of those things where it, it wouldn't have been cancelled without cause financially speaking so. You know, obviously, if it was making money, they wouldn't have cancelled it. So I think the people that see keep saying, "Well, it's their most popular show." Well, obviously, it's not making them enough money to justify its cost. Otherwise, it would exist because a business doesn't just throw away a profitable thing. Um, so, you know, it's a shame. I I, just, I would love to stay optimistic and say, "Hey, one day, you never know." But like, it is, <laughs> it is, it does seem like it's a very, it would be a, a quite an uphill battle. Um, but. Here we are, the final episode. Um, obviously, there'll be one, potentially one more of these anyway, because at some point, um, Chris has promised to come on here and talk about um, talk about his experience watching the whole show. Um, but in the meantime, let's have a chat about the um, the fi the final episode of Book Four, which is the train to nowhere. Um, which you know, um, let me see. Wait, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I can never. It's funny because I was. I literally tr tried it before we went. I went live. I was like, as soon as I hit record, I'm not going to be able to play this. <laughs> there it is. There you go. <laughs> it took me a minute to figure out what the actual notes were for that, just because I had to do it by ear. Because look, no one has bothered to like anywhere. It seems right down what those notes are, and I had to also figure out. Uh, There you go. Um, so I actually don't. I so I do actually own one of those stylophone things, but um, we can't find it. Um, so that's actually like a like an app <laughs> that mimics the sound of one. You just sort of it puts one on the screen. You sort of tap it where you would, and it works. Um, yeah. Um, I don't know why I decided to do that. <laughs> Somewhere in my head, that seemed like a good idea. Um, so let's 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 talk this episode. So I mean, for me, this is like, I mean. It's interesting, isn't it? Because it's like, this is the perfect end for this series. Uh, is it the perfect end to the show? No, not at all. Um, that would be a very disappointing end to the show. Um, if, if you didn't go into it knowing the circumstances. So, you know, because it is quite a... Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's, it's closure. It's so much closure, but it's all closure for everything that's been set up in this season. And not absolutely zero closure for any of the wider show's stuff so that is frustrating it's frustrating from the perspective of someone who watches it not knowing that that's what happened that it got cut off before the writers could finish it essentially and it's also frustrating for like it's frustrating for people who've who are, who are seeing it with, that are aware of that like knowing that it's like it's it might potentially sort of mar the legacy of the show, so it's it's tricky, isn't it? But it's I think this is a wonderful, wonderful value, and I'll I'll say the caveat one last time, and then I'll just assume that's what I mean for the rest of this episode for this series, um, because I don't think I need to say any more than I've already said on the subject of its overall positioning. Um, yeah, this is for those who don't remember the episode where, uh, well, essentially um, they all learn to apologize and acknowledge them their mistakes, and um, as a result of learning that lesson. Uh, Min and Ryan's doors appear and they get on the train and then they get to go play their gig and I'm pretty sure that's exactly what I asked for at the end of the last episode. <laughs> um, it's uncomplicated, it's just what it needs. Uh, it's funny isn't it, There's always that's always the problem I think. Sometimes you design a story so well, you end up in this situation where the right ending, the ending that your story absolutely begs for because you've set it up so well, does end up being slightly predictable as a result. So, you know, nothing really in this episode surprised me. This is pretty much exactly what I thought would happen. Um, one tiny little turn, I suppose, surprised me a little, but not really. It was just the way they linked the, the Kez stuff to the Min and Ryan stuff. 
which actually I was very impressed by because I thought, well, I might as well say it now. So basically, the, the, the thing that did sort of, no, again, surprise is the wrong word, but like go in a direction I was like, oh, that's really clever. I didn't necessarily think of that or see that coming was it's Kez's situation because I kept saying last week, oh, there'll be a moment where Kez points out the hypocrisy to Min and Ryan verbally, where she'll say to them, you're both dummies. You're telling me that I need to sort of apologize, be more thoughtful of others, understand where I'm, you know, you know, be more empathetic, essentially. You're telling me it's really obvious that's a thing I should be doing, and it's like you're not practicing that yourselves. So you imagine, I imagined a moment where Kez said that, and what they did instead was have Min and Ryan be present when Kez finally reckoned with that. And that pushed them into reckoning with it without it being so overt as having someone actually lay that out. Because I said last week, I was really pleased with how subtle it was, but then there was a part of me going in the back of my head, I don't know if I said it out loud, but there's certainly a part of me that was thinking, man, but if they then do the thing next week, where, or the next episode where Kez like basically lays it all out, does that negate some of that compliment that it's subtle, you know, that it's being subtle? Um, so that's kind of that was a real pleasant surprise because I thought they handled it really well. For those who remember the sort of the details, um, uh, Morgan lets in all the villains um, and they all charge down looking for Kez, looking for looking for. I was going to say looking for blood, but I suspect Kez doesn't have blood. I think she's warm. Maybe she does. Who knows? Um, but she uh, basically finally says sorry and I don't really lovely turn of events that works like she says she's sorry but she also which i thought was very clever she also acknowledges that there's still it, saying sorry is this is step one but then you have to say what can i do to make this up to you like what well, how do i you know um how do i i'm trying to think, make amends i think is the phrase maybe she uses i can't remember exactly how she's she phrases it but essentially, she implies is you know she wants to be able to do something to try and make it right, put it right, and that's the next step, isn't it? It's 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 one thing to express regret and sorrow for a, for a thing you did, but it's an, it's it, it goes a lot further if you then you know actions speak louder than words. Then offer to to do something to sort of put it right. Um, that's much more value. That's much more valuable, and I think it and and cares. Again, again, the subtlety of this. At no point does do Min and Ryan are they behind Kez going, Kez? Now you should really offer to help. She's learned that lesson, and that's how we learn that she's learned that lesson by seeing her lay it out like that. And it's also, again, it's it could have been so much more overt. And I think in a poor, uh, you know, a kids show that's been written more poorly than this, it, that would be, <laughs> you know, that would be how it was handled. Um, you know, so then off the back of that and off the back of everyone apologizing, Min and Ryan sort of like have that moment where they apologize and they sum it up really well, actually. I think it's really nice that cause as much as there was like back and forth about all the different elements that went into Min and Ryan's, Min and Ryan's quite complex relationship across this series, uh, Ryan acknowledged that he pushed Min before he was ready and Min said he was sorry that he wasn't honest about how he felt and that he'd left Ryan and, and sorry for leaving Ryan hanging. And then we get an extra little uh, tag from Ryan where he sort of talks about, um, let's see if I can find it. Yeah, maybe the experience is the point. I wasn't just rushing you, I was rushing myself. So he, he sort of understands that like he was so eager to get out there and do something with his life to impress his to impress someone to, to you know, because he's he, as we hinted at earlier in the season, like he feels, like he really has to earn any affection he gets in the world because his parents don't, you know, in his in his own phrasing, his parents don't seem to care much um, about what happens to him. So he has to sort of, you know, he rushed out before he was even maybe ready. Um, whereas without Ryan pushing him, Min might have stayed still forever. <laughs> um, again, I said this earlier in the season, what I love about this is these two characters do actually complement each other really well um, when they're not adults. <laughs> and not being at odds came down to them basically... <laughs> doing the thing they were asking Kez to do, which is be more considerate of others and apologize when you're not. <laughs> you know, apologize when you fail at that. Um, and that's, you know, a really good, simple advice. And I think it's a, 
it's just a really satisfying conclusion to that whole thing. And as much as I've sat here and like overanalyzed it for you know hours of, <laughs> of audio, um, in the end, it can actually be summed up quite simply. And I think that's the, that's what's it's interesting because I think it is both the, one of the series' flaws and one of the things I I actually really liked about it. Anyone who says that they found that it was harder to track the character arcs and that they didn't like that about it, you know, because it was a bit muddled and the characters didn't always know how they felt and it was all a bit sort of intentionally muddled. I could absolutely... If someone said I didn't like that about it, I would go fair. That is a fair criticism. I think it's, it's you know, a n- nice clean character arcs where it's really easy to track where the characters are and what exactly they're feeling at each moment is... Um, definitely a thing that somebody is absolutely in their right to sort of feel like oh I, I would prefer if the show handled it like that um, for me personally I enjoyed trying to pass it and identify where everyone was at each time and sort of looking at what they were saying in each episode and trying to make sense of it And because I, I, I found it just more real I found it more authentic people are walking contradictions and having characters that felt contradictorily about different things you know that's important to well for me i i i like the way they add i'm trying to think of this sort of phrases for me it's like more interesting it's it gives me more to chew on because i'm not always 100 percent sure how the characters feel but i could understand that a less easy to track character arc could be less satisfying for someone so while it did work for me i acknowledge why that wouldn't work for others um having now seen the final episode i had a glance through some of the the, the, the other criticisms i've seen and there's a lot of criticisms that to me they aren't really valid criticisms of the show just criticisms versus your expectations again it's the last jedi thing it's like a lot of like that's it what well, you know <laughs> And that's not a valid criticism <laughs> because, again, the show, this series, never promised more than that. Um, I guess I could see somebody maybe if they if they phrased it differently, if they were just like, oh, I thought they would maybe handle the Amelia stuff because they included her. That kind of that tease was there, and I could see that again. Somebody unaware of the way this series unfortunately ended prematurely may not be a you know not being aware of that that is a valid criticism i suppose you you know instead of it being teased for the next season i could have seen somebody watching the first bit of this series and thinking that it was going somewhere within the context of these 10 episodes so that is a fair criticism and i would also say i think someone pointed this out on maybe our discord and i think this is a really good this is another quite valid i think criticism to be levied at this series episode nine the steward showing up um didn't really actually serve any purpose to this story it was and and i did i think i felt that at the time but maybe didn't articulate it it's certainly it it sets maybe ryan on a on on the path that he starts in this episode but to be honest with you it becomes clear at the start of this episode the real reason ryan's upset is the realization that morgan was on the train for five years not morgan sorry uh jeremy was on the train for five years that's really what's eating him. This episode doesn't open with him being like, I'm sick of all this weird steward stuff. You know, these big tentacle monsters are keep appearing. He doesn't even mention it. It doesn't come up. It's a, it's a bit of a catalyst to throw him into just like, it's his last story. He's just like, no, I'm fed up. This is, I'm just sick of this. I don't know what's going on and I'm tired. And uh, But that, that is kind of how they frame it. That's like the thing that gets him to a place of being upset. But the actual root cause of his of his emotional issues is, is the uh, sort of turmoil he's feeling and the and how upbeat he's feeling after hearing that you could get stuck on this train for five years you know lose five years of your life to getting over these issues um so i think that's another one that i just think like that is a valid criticism was it a big issue for me personally no um but it is a valid criticism it's it's a it is something that you could easily look at and say it doesn't really have a place in this series particularly that most that that one in episode nine is more agree because you could at least argue the one in the in the, the in the opening sort of is a good setup because it, it indicates how odd it is they've joined together that they come on together and it's also a little like it's both a, it's both a thing for ryan and min sets up a thing for ryan and, min, and also sets up in the background amelia's presence and defines the time frame in terms of what where the train is at not just what year it is but has this is pre or post uh, you know amelia's takeover her coup we know it's kind of during 
it's actually it's sort of this series starts as she starts to get involved in that and then ends post Amelia having usurped one so that's good to know and it but at the same time that first one actually has some information that's relevant to Min and Ryan which is what the focus of this season is the second one gives them their items back which again is very important for the story um it's, it's the third one that you just go like oh they just did that to sort of like let you know that by the end of the series Amelia has succeeded but we didn't really need that um yeah it's not it doesn't really affect Ryan and Min's story in any way because this episode would have opened with him being upset about Jeremy having been on there for five years regardless so that is I think fair um didn't bother me personally um because again I'm sort of one, it, you know, all these little nitpicks that uh, no, I say nitpicks, they're not, that's not fair. These other criticisms, I'm th those sort of criticism hearing about like consistency of character throughout the season and uh, and issues like um, like that one, they just weren't enough to overcome how much joy there was in this series for me, like how much I physically enjoyed it. Like it was funny, I thought the visuals were great, I thought it was, I thought it was really smart, I liked the characters. I thought the pacing of this series, now I've seen it all, it was just spot on. I have said, I think particularly regarding season two in the past, the pacing really struggled at the end. It's sort of like, it was almost like they needed two more episodes really to, to, to do the story they were wanting to tell justice. Um, I think that was less true of season, of book three, but that was definitely true of book two. So, you know, that's definitely a, a, a trap this show has fallen into in the past, even if only the once, you know, in a sort of really, like, noticeable way. Um, and they avoided that here, like, masterfully. It's 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 a really perfectly pitched series. And, you know, every episode had laugh-out-loud moments. Every episode had heart. Every episode had, you know interesting ideas in terms of the train cars it was like a super creative season as well and i know every season of the show has been creative so someone could say like oh maybe that's not enough anymore like you know you i think one thing i read and this might be the same person who made the other comment but like there was a one i read in our discord on the other nothing was that discord that was um someone pointed out you know in a, in a series where if you're if you're going back to basics and your focus is going to be the character stories and the character stories have to be absolutely like flawless and again I totally understand and respect someone feeling that way. It's not a, it's not a, it's not an invalid, you know, you know, I, the people who I th that I think are maybe coming at this from the wrong angle are just the ones who were like, it wasn't what I expected. I'm disappointed. I don't, I just don't think that's fair in the circumstances, but um, that criticism, yeah, I it's fine. Like I said, that's what I talked about earlier. Like anybody who felt that way, you know, felt that the, st the character stuff was maybe too muddled for its own good, and that that hampered their enjoyment of it. Then absolutely, yeah, like that's unfortunate. I've, I'm, what a, it's a shame that you didn't like it the same way that maybe you know I did. But that's, uh, you know, that's just taste, isn't it? That's just preference. Some 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 things you like, some things you don't. There, are any album I put on, there are tracks I prefer to others, and it'll still be, you know, for some people this will be a really strong season. It'll be up there with the others, and some, for some people it will be one of the weaker seasons, and um, even maybe the worst. And you know, that's uh, just taste, isn't it? Because um, for me, those issues were just not big enough to get over, like the 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 things that worked so well about this particular series of the show. So yeah, um, we should get more into the specifics of this episode because I feel like I'm talking a bit more generally about the season, which I or I think I was going to do, but I was going to do it towards the end. Um, but I've sort of gone straight into that. Um, so yeah, um, how? Uh, how long has it been <laughs> when this episode starts is my first note because it's literally we start and it's like there's loads of food trays outside ryan's not been eating for a while a couple days maybe it's hard to say i mean the, the the villains haven't gotten bored of just waiting outside by a campfire so i don't know i found that strange to be honest with you and i realized as well i think last week i said like oh they can't get in because the bouncer's not letting them they couldn't get in because the drawbridge was up obviously like none of them could fly um so yeah, that was actually that's not true, is it? The 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 eyeball Parker people, the the eyeball version of the Parker people can float, but I guess if the drawbridge is closed, you can float over to it all you like, but you're still not getting inside. So I guess yeah, um, I just found it strange because it was just like time to clearly pass, but they were non-specific as to how much, and it was just I don't know. I found that odd, like a couple like a day or two maybe. I don't know. Um, yeah. Um, I also find it weird that everything sort of stalled for a couple of days and they just sort of hung around. 
because it feels like no one really like you know it feels like everyone was like right on the verge of their character development and then they all held up held you know sat around learning nothing or doing nothing for two days and then came back <laughs> to like now it is time to continue my character development um it does seem like i mean i really like where they start ryan in this episode all that frustration and talking about no progress at all and then talking about jeremy and then that that confession right up top that uh you know he had the chance for his exit and he, d he did consider it and i thought that was brilliant and it also just reminded me of how genius that idea actually still is the idea that the lesson he needed to learn was about not running ahead like not you know not getting ahead of himself before he's ready you know not leaving min behind and then he was faced with that dilemma because again the train has a really i, I always get feel like the train because it because it seems to understand exactly what people's issues are i do feel like it concoct circumstances often to like test specific because it's although it's too it's too much coincidence otherwise i mean that situation was so perfectly suited to ryan's lesson i i <laughs> you can't tell me that's not design of some sort um and since everything on the train is controllable slash controlled you know and designed then yeah, you really doesn't. I can't see it being any other explanation. And we should talk about that a little bit actually, because I got I got quite a lot of pushback. I thought that was interesting. Um, it was my interpretation of the train was like, and I think it was the eighth episode, seventh episode. It was the art gallery car episode. I, there were quite a lot of comments of people strongly disagreeing. This the, to this idea I have that the train sort of um, adjusts the experience as it goes to maybe make people help people learn the lessons they specifically need to learn. I. I don't know why that got such pushback. Uh, maybe it's the way I phrased it, made it sound more magical than science, but I mean, you know, I, I talk about it, like weird cosmic train stuff. I'm really talking about the train, obviously, calculating exactly, you know, what this person's issues are and and, and not always getting it right, presumably, because people, there are people who get stuck on the train for long periods of time, but, you know, trying to calculate exactly what that person needs to or what would potentially help that person get off you know there's there's got to be some sort of decision making happening even if it's not moving the cars around but placing them near cars they know will help uh the train knows will help uh, when it starts them uh, or denizens that might help when it starts them i think yeah i don't see why that was such a controversial idea if i'm being honest um I, if anything i think like the show is kind of basically confirmed that like it's never outright said it but like so much evidence in the show of a of a of, of a guiding hand of sort of like the like the programming of the train um just constantly sort of keeping an eye on that um yeah it didn't seem like i said it didn't seem too much of a controversial idea to me um because obviously everything is digital and being adjusted at all times or not being adjusted at all times but like it's all it feels like almost like it's all programming right so a program can adjust to the new quests i think that's that's ai isn't it well not AI, like ai in the true sense but like you know you turn on a video game the, the game will change things based on your behavior so i don't see why it's so hard to believe the train would do that um there are games that even adjust difficulty depending on how it believes how, how good the game you are um so yeah, it doesn't seem out of the realms of possibility for a train with the sort of technology this train has. But hey, um, that, yeah, a lot of people felt strongly about that. Who knew? Um, uh, maybe it's just the way I phrased it. I kind of, I guess, I made it sound more magical and cosmic than like my actual thoughts on it, which is that it is just you know, it's obviously all a digital process. So I don't know, whatever. Um, <laughs> I don't really have any strong opinions either way. Like I'm not so. I didn't read those comments and feel like. How dare they? But like, there was a part of it that's just like that's interesting. I think it's I think it's interesting that people felt very strongly about that. Um, so yeah, I thought this episode was just a great reminder of how episode, how clever the, the 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 situation they put Ryan in earlier this season actually was. Um, and I like that Min, who's clearly mellowed out a lot as the series has gone on, I really enjoyed seeing him. Like after last week when he sort of sat down and was. He, when Ryan was still mad at Kez, Min was the one who was like being reasonable. About it. I was like, actually, I think you helped him, and you know, maybe you need to reframe how you're looking at that. It, Min again came in with Ryan, who was upset and was like, "No, you, 
you know, having a bad thought and acting on that thought are not the same thing, essentially. He doesn't say that, but he just says you had a bad thought, um, and that's okay, you know. Um, so, yeah, I thought that was really, like, showed a lot of growth from Min, and that's, I think, one of the most satisfying things about this episode is, like, while Ryan still has some way to go, clearly, based on the last episode or two, Min has gotten way ahead of him, and that is evident in that the, one of the next things that happens is Min starts playing music, um, and it's just like, well, I'm, I'm a little behind because we haven't played for a while, so I'm just going to practice. I'm going to get up. And then he sort of basically tells Ryan, you know, we're, we're in this together again. Like, we're going to we're gonna go for it with this music thing. And I think that was... Um, I think that's really, like, a sweet moment. And it leads to, obviously, it leads to Min's... Um, number going to zero and Ryan's not which by the way called it the numbers can desync based on their progress which means when Ryan's door appeared it wasn't just one door appearing for both of them it was Ryan's their numbers were different in that moment and it also puts in my head canon now for sure that during the pig um, the pig baby car episode Ryan was looking at a different number on his hand it was only Min's that had gone up which is why he was so upset with Min because he knew his number had gone up which reaffirms my criticism of that episode, which is that they should have shown us that because it would have given us a lot more context for it. Um, there was no reason not to, and it would have made the episode make more sense. Um, and for those, someone did comment, I think at some point as well, looking through them, it said like, oh, well, it's, I consider the end credit part, part of the episode. And that's totally fine, except the only, the only reason I think this is a thing for me is I know a lot of people don't watch, no, one, don't watch the credits, but two, uh, almost all of these, um, streaming apps start to load the next episode while you're watching the last one so you know that's one of those things where you're gonna miss you're gonna miss that like unless you actively back out of it which is you know who's gonna do that um so yeah proof of desync numbers but i do think it's interesting that min gets there first um it, it fits it works perfectly well with the fact it's clear from the previous episode that min's in a more understanding place he's listening to what Kez is saying and being empathetic with her. So he has kind of already learned the lesson. He's just not put it into practice so much yet. Um, which is what we end up seeing in this episode. Well, a little bit the last one, but particularly this one when he picks up his instrument, he's like, no, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm with you. I've just got to catch up. And then his number goes to zero. And they're like, well, you can go through your door. He's like, no, I'm not leaving you. I'm, I'm here until your door appears. And um, obviously, to be honest with you, which is which is lovely and sweet, but let's be realistic. If he'd have gone for the door, it would have vanished before he got there, <laughs> because that would have very much been a selfish leaving someone behind move, which is very much against what they'd learned this series, and it would have brought his number back up with the door would have vanished anyway. So you know, um, I like that. I also have a theory, and this is just a like head cannon theory that if he'd have tried to go through the door, even if it hadn't, the number hadn't gone back up, and the door would have vanished. And this is the same for Ryan when he saw his door back in the art gallery car. Um, I think they'd have just bumped into it the way um, Lake did in book two. I don't think they'd have actually been able to pass. Because it, you notice in the visuals of this, so they, they got on the train together. And I said early on, I bet you they have to leave together. That's the only way they're getting off. And whether that's enforced by the fact that whenever one of them chooses to leave the other behind, the number would go up and it would vanish. Or I maybe mean, if they ran for it before it could vanish they'd hit a barrier because the, the visual here is that one door appears and when it, and when the next one appears they overlay over each other and create one door and i don't think they could have left until that happened so even if ryan in the art gallery car or min in this car had been able to dive at that door before it could possibly think about it and vanish i think they'd have just bumped against it anyway <laughs> so that's kind of my, and again that's all head cannon but i just that's that makes a lot of sense to me like that's the logic i think has been used here but i was very pleased to see that they physically had desync numbers in this because min's was down at zero ryan's was still at like uh, 100 and something or 200 and something um 202 probably um and i just was like yeah so that revalidates my old criticism where i was like maybe they'll be they'll do something with it and i'll feel better about it they didn't there's literally no reason they didn't or couldn't have shown that in the previous in that previous episode. Um, so yeah, I really like um, I really like. There's a line in this uh, when <laughs> when Min sort of is learning his lesson. He's like, oh, you know, they they show him being on board of music now. He has this speech where he says like he hates finance, he hates fairy tales. He sorry, he hates fairy tale themed restaurants, and then he hates Horace, which I think is that really snotty 
customer maybe from the from the thing i need to double check that but then he throws the humpty dumpty restaurant keys through that through you know through morgan through morgan's window and then he says this brilliant line and this is just expert writing because it's because it's both him learning a lesson and him also helping ryan in the same breath he says uh, you stuck with me so n- now you're stuck with me i just thought that was such a clever line how well written is that it's and it's you know it's it's you stuck with me back in the art gallery car so now you're stuck with me you made the the call to stick with me i'm sticking with you um and it's yeah it's just a perfect culmination of all the ideas of this season and like i can't tell you how satisfying i found that and that's the thing this series finale had the goal of being a satisfying conclusion to this series and it absolutely was in on every level um i noticed as well um that, that when i edit the last episode that like the parker people outside were around the fire the parker denizens were clearly repairing their device um and that's why the creamer wasn't back yet and i noticed that while i was editing that one mm. Sorry, I had to take a sip of my water. I started to feel something in the back of my throat like I was going to cough. Um, the uh, So that's why the um, creamer wasn't back. And I noticed it as I was editing it, and I was really annoyed at myself because I hadn't spotted it when I was actually doing the, the doing yesterday's video. Um, and so I felt like an absolute idiot. Um, <laughs> so in this episode, as soon as it comes on, I was like, yeah, and they're going to fix the thing and bring her back, of course. Um, I was surprised. I said this last week, but I was still surprised that the, the, the Den- Parker Denizens are alive. But you know, cartoon, I guess. Cartoon and magic train. I don't know, like whatever. Uh, they also have definitely fudged pig toddler's height compared to the Mega Maze episode. Um, I think they used the transitional. They did, I think they like made him smaller in the previous one slightly too, so, so you know to make that transition feel a bit more organic. Um, but I'm pretty sure he was much bigger in the uh, the Mega Maze one. It's fine. It's a cartoon again. Sizing and like where you know how big everything is is like easily fudged. Um, Steven Universe was horrendous for that. <laughs> um, I love Steven Universe to bits, but the consistency in characters' heights was all over the place, particularly with the Diamond characters. Um, so yeah, it's just something I noticed. It's fine. It's like a small detail. It doesn't really matter. And ninety nine percent of people are not going to spot that. So that is that is not a uh, <laughs> that is not a criticism really worth levying. That is a proper nitpick. Um, Morgan choosing um, to allow herself to be hurt in order to like, push Min and Ryan through the door really does show how tough this has all been on her because she's like she can't see more people come in be, sort of befriend her and leave so she's when when min's door shows up the reason all of our uh, our friends <laughs> our friends the, uh, the 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 various antagonists of the series all get to come in is because she's opened it up for them and uh you know she knows they're gonna bash through the place and 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 do a lot of damage to her but she does it anyway which is i think just a real sign of trauma like self like it's almost like self-sabotage um so that's quite tragic um but of course once they get in that's when kez apologizes and that's when everyone just starts apologizing and we have one of my favorite jokes of the episode which is when one of the parker denizens turns to the bouncer and says no no nigel i should be the one sorry about that you are a wonderful father <laughs> just made me chuckle it's such a funny idea um so yeah everyone starts apologizing to everyone after kez apologizes they do a great thing when kez first apologizes well they make it seem like maybe they're not gonna buy that and that's not going to be sufficient. And then they're like, you know, it's, it's, it's nice that you've said that. And it's like, oh, that would have worked all along. They're not unreasonable. Well, except for Judge Morpho, who is, I think, the truest of the of, uh, the truest villain amongst this bunch. Um, you know, um, just seemingly out for revenge, regardless of whether Kez feels sorry or not. Um, but she gets, she gets punted out through the fireplace which is pretty cool uh it's a good it's a good ending for that character i think it's i think i would have felt honestly like I, all of the other characters i think are kez you know like their, their frustration with kez seemed to be that she was kind of almost ignoring the issue of running away um uh, that's why they were kind of gr- had a grievance with her whereas i think morpho genuinely hated kez you know for real personal reasons so i i think the way they balanced that actually made it more believable i think if they'd have tried to make me believe 
that Judge Morpho was like accepted the apology and went back to her, I'd be like, mm, you seemed madder than the others. <laughs> you seem, it was more personal for you than the others. Um, also, the fact that Judge Morpho is still alive is kind of amazing, by the way. I, I, I've not even mentioned that fact. She just sort of like it's been a couple of days. She's just been sat inside the pig, even though it's seemingly at any moment she could have just opened the mouth and left. <laughs> that is another nitpick, but yeah, that, I, I did find that a bit strange. Um, so yeah, that was all very good. I also liked that once that they'd left, you know, they they repaired Morgan. Um, it was Ryan's idea to use the device to turn sort of Morgan back in time to when Morgan was repaired. I just thought that was a nice detail. Um, so yeah, Kez apologizing to Morgan is like a really nice moment, and that's when we get the, uh, you know, when when Morgan's talking about the, the not being ready to be over the trauma yet, like you know, and there's, and and it's during that whole conversation when she sort of says maybe we can talk later, which is kind of like, I think kind of the perfect way because it would be hard I think to sell me on Morgan being okay and in a good place in this ten minutes. Uh, it's very short like this episode and there's a lot already going on i think if you'd have done it this is one of the reasons i suppose this doesn't feel rushed is that what they basically do is they give you like enough of a hint that morgan's working on it and that morgan is shifting that way and maybe with time morgan will learn to forgive kez it's you know it's just a little crumb of 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 character progression you know rather than actually trying to convince me that by the end of this episode they're buddies again which you know, would be, I think, a really hard sell in the time you've got. So I just think that's a really smart way to make it, give it closure without, like, being unrealistic. Um, so yeah, maybe we can talk later. It's, like, a really nice moment. Um, and then just, like, final couple of details and things I wanted to bring up. Um, Kez's bell can finally be rung. I mean, that's wonderful. That's, uh, it's, fi it's finally been rung. Like, all series, I've been wondering that. I don't know if I've ever actually voiced that on a, on an episode, but, like, I have been so curious as to whether her bell works. Um, and I thought the way they handled it was great, Ryan, just being like, I don't know if this is rude, but I really want to know, and I've only got one more chance to find out. Um, fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. Just what a great, <laughs> that was a great moment. And I love that she called them corpses as they left, which obviously called back to the very first time they met. Um, the goodbye was sweet, but not like too too soppy, like which I think was the, is the right level for this group. Um, like It wasn't too... like emotional uh, it, you know it was it was, just, it was a good level it was a really good level and um and obviously then they get what what the thing i wanted from episode one which is they got to new york same gig that they had originally booked or another one a few weeks down the line who knows who knows but they play um train to nowhere which is uh, the melody obviously that they do you know came up with um the melody they came up with in the in the party car, which is which I think is lovely. The lyrics are fun. Um, it's kind of a hint to the weirdness of the train, but also that it's that you know they were able to deal with it because they were together, um, which is just a nice little cap, a nice fun little cap for the for the whole show. Um, they have they they earn their first fan by the look of it, which I thought is sweet. Uh, there's not much to say on that ending other than just that it's perfect like it's like yeah like I, I did one just a minute like a short song show them does i don't need to see them succeeding i don't need to see them sell, see them selling a thousand albums just know that they're together and they're doing it and that they're that they're that, you know they're getting small victories winning over at least one person who's like have you got a cassette <laughs> which they haven't made yet so yeah i was totally love that um other small details um i don't have much else actually written down um no randall in the end of this series which made me very i think a little glimpse of randall obviously with the, in the the art gallery car but no actual randall um which suggests randall had definitely not sort of infected the whole train yet the way he has in later seasons um uh, maybe that's a result of the cat and amelia like i don't know uh, the whole, maybe it's a result of all the events we've already seen rather than a thing that always was um, but while that it does make me a little bit sad but there's a part of me that's like again that's almost like a mini version of that expectation versus what this was going to be situation like I, it, it, at no point did the writers say that, that Randall would be in this series at no point did they hint that the series was going to give the whole show closure so it's like it's unfair of me to expect that from the show you know so um, I, as sad as I am to not have Randall I'm, you know that is how that worked out um, so, um, yeah, just a big thumbs up to the cast crew. I think this is a 
wonderful series, particularly uh, the voice cast like Minty Lewis, Johnny Young, and um, Sakai. Right, I tried to, I've gone on Google to try and see if I can pronounce this correctly for the poor man, because it's really unfair, and I feel like a monster for pronouncing this wrong every time I've tried to, tried to do it. Um, so I believe it's Mur- Murashigi. Murashigi? Murish- so I still can't do it, even though I've looked up the phonetic pronunciation. Murash- Murashigi. Murashigi. That's what I've got. <laughs> it's probably wrong, and I'm very sorry. Uh, that, although in that one, I'll partly blame that one on Google because Google gave me a phonetic spelling for it. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, um, wonderful season. Um, I, I try to think of this. I feel like there's more stuff to say, but I think I managed to because I had a bunch of stuff I was going to say at the end. But I think I got a lot of it out at the top where I talked more generally about the series. I think I sort of ended up doing this episode backwards. That's the problem when you when you don't write these. You just sort of turn a microphone on and ramble for forty minutes. Um, <laughs> you're always gonna you're always gonna end up just sort of it's gonna be sort of a stream of consciousness, just like my thoughts just spilling out. Um, but I thought this was a wonderful one, uh, wonderful series, and I'm. I'm thrilled that we got it it's so I, I tell you what the, the lesson we all need to go on the train to learn <laughs> is that you need to appreciate the things that you've had not the things that you haven't and while it's sad that the thing that we like is gone and and and, and probably won't return um i think it's i think it's better to focus on appreciating how great it was in its time um and obviously hope that the the various very talented people that brought this show to life get to continue making great things that we can enjoy in future um so yeah big thanks to Owen Dennis the whole crew Lindsay Katai um and 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 just everyone basically that ever (laughs) put a thought that ended up in this or drew a frame of animation or designed a character or you know uh, whatever pitched an idea at a writer's retreat like anyone who ever basically contributed to this um from the voice actors right through to the artists is just you've all done an amazing thing and it's it's a it's it is one of the best animated shows it's it will it will remain that way um it'll always have a sense of tragedy to it because it will always have not been finished um it will always feel that way um but i i still think we have to admire it for what it actually managed to be and it what it managed to be was pretty incredible <laughs> um yeah so thanks so much for you guys for listening obviously we'll be back at some point to talk about this with with chris um i did mention this yesterday but on the 29th if you're listening to this um on the 28th the day it comes out uh, actually no, this comes out on the 29th so yeah today the day this is released if you're listening to this on day release go hit twitter up and do i think it's um finish infinity train hashtag finish infinity train or just hashtag infinity train they're going to try and get it trending um and then i think owen's going to select a bunch of people who random at random who tweeted that and send them like stickers or buttons or something um it's it, it, hey like who am i to say how likely this is to happen maybe there's something happening in the background i'm missing maybe this fourth season has been like a huge huge hit compared to the third at hbo max having to scratch their heads and go oh, maybe this is financially viable i don't know but either way there's it's never it's it, never give up obviously like if there's an opportunity for us to get the show trending i think that's just even if that doesn't help us re- revive the show i think it's just a nice thing to like let people know it exists it might inspire more people to discover it and that's a wonderful thing in itself so head over to twitter at some point and 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 uh, you know spread that hashtag and and share that love for the for this show but thank you guys so much for sticking with me on this journey it's been a hell of a journey doing all four seasons this way um and we, but again, we probably will be back. Uh, there's other stuff on the channel. If you're interested, you hear me and Chris talking about Steven Universe or Avatar The Last Airbender or Over, over the Garden Wall um, and breaking those down uh, to a similar level of depth, um, although a little bit <laughs> more energy where there's two of us, one bounce off the other. Um, but yeah, thanks again. And I will hopefully see you guys soon when me and Chris sit down to talk about it. But otherwise, um, maybe I will see you guys again for another Um, series like this so yeah thanks very much for listening guys and we'll see you in the future i should really um be editing this podcast you're listening to right now um but 
Instead, I've taken 10 minutes to quickly learn this so I can tag it to the end. Um, I'd say enjoy, but that seems optimistic. There goes nothing. Train to nowhere. Train to nowhere. Train to nowhere. At least you're there. Train to nowhere. Train to nowhere. Train to nowhere. At least you're there. You hit rock bottom and you're acting tough. Find yourself never good enough Must be nice to feel as light as air Same routine day in and out No idea what it's all about Must be nice to live without a care Train to nowhere Train to nowhere Train to nowhere 